All right. Well, good morning. Good morning. We will we will get started. We will. Hey, Debbie. We will get started now with our first NADAC meeting of the new year and some exciting things going on. And uh, there's nothing more exciting, though, than the start of a new year. And we are excited about 2021. Uh, we've been saying 2020 so long. We had anticipated 2020 for many years. Oh, what a great year 2020 will be. And now I think everybody's excited to see 2020 in the rear view mirror. Uh, it has been a challenging year, but I want to say this. There are a lot of silver linings. And if anything, 2020 was a year that in many ways brought us together here in Natchez because I am excited about the unity, the harmony that we celebrate here in our city. The very first official act of 2021 at City Hall this morning was a meeting in our lobby with the City Hall staff at 9 a.m. where we reflected upon the past year. We talked about the year now started and the importance that we at City Hall have in establishing and maintaining a spirit of unity that if we expect the city to be a city of unity and harmony, then we need to example that in our city government. And we also prayed this morning. And I'd like to do that now for us here at this first NADAC meeting of the new year. So if you would pray with me. Father, we thank you for the year just passed and the year now just starting. And Father, we're excited about this new year. We pray your blessings upon it. We pray for opportunity. We pray, O oh Lord, for, for the great change to come as we go from a year that was so fraught with concern and, and challenge into a year that we believe is going to shine with new promise. Father, we thank you for getting us through 2020. And Father, our hearts are still heavy today for those who are dealing with the virus, those who are sick, those who have lost loved ones. But Father, we also thank you that you have brought us through. And we do pray now your blessings upon our city. We know this virus is soon going to be a thing of the past. We look forward to the day where we can leave the face mask at home and where we can celebrate victory over coronavirus. But Father, we thank you that Natchez is not a city easily stopped, that we are a resilient people. And during this time, truly, we have made many great strides. Now be with us in this meeting. And be with all of us, our families, our loved ones, asking for your blessings and your prosperity over this new year. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, I have a report for you, and then we'll get to individual reports. Uh, got busy at City Hall the other day. We're busy every day. <laughs> but. In this particular day, I said, it's time for us to take inventory of what we've done these five months. We're only five months on the job and what we have left to do. And what we found out as we went through this process, and I brought my executive assistant, Richard Burke, in there with me. Richard's been there every day. Brian has. Brian, we're going to meet later today. I know Brian Marvel and so many others helping in this. And uh, so... We filled up a few pages, and I'm going to go through this, and it's the seven points of our Natchez Renewal Plan. And it will describe some things that we've done, but it also will describe many things that we have to follow through on. I'm just going to hit bullet points. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this, but I think it's a good way to give a, a summary for 2020 and a challenge for 2021. As we took office, we set about doing 
things in a way where we, we follow the Natchez Renewal Plan. It's a seven-point plan. It started out as a six-point plan. Then we added a seventh point at the inauguration, which had to do with financial renewal. Well, it's now really an eight-point plan because we've been dealing a lot with infrastructure and miscellaneous. There's a lot to running a city. I'm finding out a lot to running the city of Natchez, but also a lot of things that over the years had been put aside or put on the back burner. And if you put things off too long, eventually you got to address it. We're spending a lot of our time with that. But the reason I want to go through this is in talking about a strong economy, it's important when you're attracting industry that they know that the city is about its business. And in Natchez, we are taking care of business. So I'm going to take the seven points in order, and then I'm going to summarize with the eighth point. So number one, business recovery and tourism. The best thing that we can say, 2020, we kept our economy open during a national pandemic. When many economies around our country closed and were thrown into depression era conditions, we here in Natchez kept our economy open over these last five months since our administration began, not only have we been open, but we have made tremendous strides in many areas. We have started a project to have new docks under the hill and to raise Silver Street. We have started a num number of task forces related to business recovery and tourism, including a downtown development task force, a task force on fiber, tourism and ingenuity and, and diversity task force, a task force on small business incubation. During this time, we have worked on a project. We're continuing to work toward putting lights back on the ri river bridges. We applied for a brownfield grant to clean up the tire plant. We've attracted new businesses, over 20 new businesses, over 150 new building permits. One third of our real estate market now sold, many new jobs being provided, and we are truly in a time of great renewal. We have seen our sales tax collections increase. In fact, October, November, ahead of 2019, which was not a pandemic year. We've begun working, we've begun working on a Broadway Entertainment District plan, and with the help of John Norris and Tate Taylor working on plans now that will soon be seen in new construction as we rehabilitate the depot to bring a whole new tourism experience there. We started the Shift South campaign. The only city in the deep south to do this, the only city, the only municipal government in Mississippi doing this, we opened up 18 slots, and at last count, we already had eight candidates. We also have built our relationship with Natchez, Inc. We're so excited about that relationship, and we are also continually building our relationship with Visit Natchez. And we can't wait to see a new executive director for tourism for Visit Natchez hired in January. The second item on our platform, job training. Well, we had to go to plan B. Looks like we've got an economic development prospect for the tire plant. Let's hope and pray that's the case. So we decided to visit with our lobbyists who are great consultants on where all these millions of dollars are coming from for job training, looking not only to Jackson, but to Washington, D.C. Do you know that millions of dollars in job training funds are now in the stimulus package just signed by the president, the same package that included funding for Forks of the Road? And we now have a partnership with the school district, with Adams County, and with Colin. We are working toward having an, ex an outstanding job training center at the Secra building. It seems that the logic that works in Mississippi 
has been community colleges partnering with school districts and local municipal governments. And this is win-win for everyone in our region. And we're going to make it happen. That meeting will occur very soon. The meeting I'm referring to is a meeting with our lobbyists and even engineers to begin the plans on what it will take to revitalize that building as a job training center and getting the money we need to make it happen. We have a task force working in this area, our workforce development task force, and they're now doing an assessment of the job training already offered in Natchez Adams County and the job training that is needed by our local industry. The third plank of our platform, Med Natchez, medical economic development. I'm proud to say we already have a new clinic on North Martin Luther King Jr. Street. Couldn't be more proud. Brian Marvel, I appreciate everything you did to help us get that clinic and to get it open. And the Belle Rouge Clinic already is a beautiful addition to North Martin Luther King Jr. Street. We also are about to have a new medical clinic in town. Vigilant Health will be opening an employer-based clinic, employer-dedicated clinic here in Natchez sometime first quarter 2021. We have a task force about to start meeting Med Natchez. A marketing analysis is about to be underway. We have, it's already underway and we're going to see great strides made in the area of medical economic development. We have a health and wellness task force, and we also have a mental health task force. Looking forward to a lot that they can accomplish in the year to come. The next plank on our platform, youth and recreational renewal. Well, we have a recreational renewal task force. It is chaired by Alderwoman Valencia Hall, and we couldn't be more proud of the work they've already started. They're doing an assessment of all of the city-owned parks, the needs. We will be meeting again on January 20th to look at that list of needs and to start prioritizing that list everywhere from Duncan Park to North Natchez Park and looking for the money to make these projects happen. Why is recreation so important? It's important to economic development because it can absolutely be an economic development tool when people know that we have programs for their youth and programs also for our senior adults. We're looking in 2021 at restoration of the golf clubhouse, a continuation of improvements in our tennis program and improvements to our parks. We also have a committee that will soon begin meeting to plan a sports and wellness complex for our city and county. The next item on our agenda, the safe city. We want Natchez to be a smart city and a safe city. Well, it was a real challenge coming in and finding out we're having all these personnel changes, but we now have a new police chief and a new fire chief and we couldn't be more proud. They are already doing great work. And I think people are probably already seeing a stepped up police presence. I give a warning, we're writing more tickets. We're writing a lot more tickets when it comes to speeding, when it comes to violations of our noise ordinance. We're even now starting to, to warn people 18 wheelers, you can't park on Broadway Street. You can't violate our no truck routes. Why is this so important? Because when we are enforcing crime, the small things, it sends a message and it helps keep your crime down in the big things. We have a safe city task force that's now meeting. It comprised of our sheriff, our police chief, personnel from county and city, our police committee from our board of aldermen, and also private citizens, including family members of some of the victims of crime. They are already making great recommendations. We have had improved security on the bluff, and we are now increasing a presence of police in our downtown area. 
We also, the seventh plank on our platform, unity in our community. I think we need look no further than just the fact that Natchez was celebrated by Netflix as one of only six cities in the United States deserving of a Christmas makeover. Why? Because when so many cities have been torn apart by violence, hate, destruction, here in Natchez, 2020 was truly a year of love, harmony, and peace. Another great indicator of unity, the fact that this city is working more closely with the county than ever before. And I appreciate President Ricky Gray and our Board of Supervisors for making that possible. I also appreciate Mr. Robert Bradford because we have worked together to fight COVID, not with the city having its own plan or the county having its own plan, but all of us together on one plan. All of that builds unity. And I'm excited to see the sheriff and our new police chief working together already, even riding around together and attacking crime together. Unity is the key to community and opportunity, and it's happening in Natchez. If you look at our Natchez Christmas, may I say we've gotten reports that it's been the most beautiful Christmas ever. The tree lighting, the reverse parade, over 211 cars full of smiling children enjoying the parade. The decorated downtown, yes. Netflix, yes. But hasn't the bluff been beautiful? And for the first time in our city's history, a Kwanzaa display, a Hanukkah display, this shows great unity. We also had a unity concert on the bluff. Eric Genuous, a great concert. We've been frustrated by COVID that we couldn't have more concerts and social gatherings, but our time is coming. And we also are proud of what's been going on in our community with regard to our veterans. Very key to unity in a community is to make sure we are taking care of our seniors and yes, our veterans. And we are forming a Veterans Affairs Task Force and we were very proud to take part in the Reads Across America program at the National Cemetery in December. Now, the additional plank in our platform that was added at the inauguration, the seventh plank, I may be losing count here, there's so many, financial renewal. You know, we came into a city that for the last several years have been suffering, gone through Five city clerks, I believe that's right, in four years, had fallen behind on its audits, had been late doing budgets. Well, let me tell you, I'm very grateful for Sevilla Fortenberry, who has now been on the job just a little over a year. She has been a great help to me. We've been able to close some city accounts that weren't being used making government more efficient. We've saved over 500,000 on insurance renewals. We balanced the 1920 budget. We balanced the 2021 budget. We completed the 1718 audit. We're working on the 1819 audit. Yes, we had to ask for an extension, but we're going to get this done. Not only that, we have secured reimbursement for city COVID expenses from MEMA, from the state, to the tune of $369,000. We're excited about our financial renewal, not to mention sales tax being up. But now to miscellaneous infrastructure, things that we just happened to start working on because we needed to. 
I'm excited that we're soon going to have the appraisals done on Margaret Martin, and Margaret Martin is about to be sold to Dunleith. And by the way, Dunleith is in the very final days of a $1 million renovation, and we're hopeful that they'll be serving supper at the castle for Valentine's Day. We also, just last week, approved 61,000 in beautification bids for our city. Starting this week, we are going to be demolishing six derelict, unsafe structures in the city of Natchez. It's been a long time since something like that has been done. Not only that, we are about to clean Martin Luther King Jr. Street from start to finish. We're going to start at Orlean Street, and we're going all the way out north of town to Pilgrim Boulevard. We're cleaning the gutters, the sidewalks, the drains, long overdue. In addition to that, this week, the progress will start to remove the old dead shrubbery at the interchange at Liberty Road and Sergeant Prentice, replace it with topsoil, seed it, and it'll be a beautiful new area, more easily maintained. We're about to get our task force going again on ADA compliance looking for grants and ways that we can have better accessibility for the disabled in Natchez. We're waiting soon on word for a grant we've applied for to replace the city hall roof that looks like a quilt and leaks about the same and is over 60 years old. We are working with the airport and the county board of supervisors on an idea for a build grant to improve the airport. We are in the final phase of a $14 million renovation of rail service from Natchez to Brookhaven, a Tiger Grant that was awarded to Natchez four years ago. We have, over the last five months, launched over one million in erosion projects around our city. City funds matched with federal funds using grants. We have worked with MDOT to get paving projects done, and you may have noticed some major improvements along Sergeant Prentice, along Devereaux Drive. You may have noticed restriping projects. And over the last few weeks, because of the rains, we've been cleaning streets, curbs, gutters, We've been cleaning these drains, and we have been working like never before. We've also had a new transparency. Our meetings, as soon as the inauguration was held, went back to open and public, social distance. But our live streaming and our Natchez Renewal programs means that we now have more citizens in Natchez engaged in city government than ever in our history. And we're excited. And Dustin, we thank you for that. All of this while managing two hurricanes and several historic rain events. And then the icing on the cake. And this is just something we as a community can celebrate we broke ground on a new high school and if there's anything more important to our future economic development than a new high school i don't know what it is because truly when we are investing in our children then we're showing where our priorities are and we're excited about that so folks that's the list there's a lot on the list we have not been twiddling our thumbs for the last five months, but while there's a lot on the list, and yes, it's a lot that we can look to, it's also a lot that we can look forward to. Our work has just begun. A lot on this list, 
has to be followed through on. There is a lot to do. We've got to be a little less talk and a little more action and make sure that we follow up our words with the actual deeds. So that's my report. And we'll now turn it over to y'all. I'm going to say, Debbie Hudson, you're in the room. We'll go to the callers next, but would you like to come and give us a report? And we are practicing a lot of safety here. We have, uh, it, it may be wet if you touch it. We have the cleanest microphone in Natchez. There we go. Well, Happy New Year. Uh, only thing I have is all those great committees, all those great things we can see that's going to happen in 2021. Thank you, Mayor, for leading the way. We appreciate that. And uh, please call on the chamber as you can. Uh, my only report is the Netflix, uh, because I was directly involved with that, has just been wonderful. Um, even, I want to say, Saturday night, people were slowly driving downtown. We brought a lot of visitors in from shop owners. They've been telling me people have been everywhere, have come here, and they asked them why, and it was the lights. So um, I hope we can continue whatever we do with those lights because they're going to be given to us. Um, we need to market that and continue to keep Natchez open like that because it has made a difference we got a lot of tourists in for that so um anyway that's about all i have and i'll continue helping as much as we can thank you debbie i'm going to tell you um i will never forget when you called me and there we had this email and we started talking about netflix and we answered a few questions i i, I I had no idea how significant this would end up being and the fact that we were only one of six cities chosen. And yes, we did ask them up front, can we keep the lights? And they are allowing us to keep the lights. And so our community liaison, Brian Marvel, is actually uh, uh, helping me to make sure we follow up. Blue Revolver, the company that installed the lights, is supposed to be giving us a list of vendors that we can call on in the years to come. Uh, a lot of people have asked, can we keep the lights up year round? Um, sadly, no, um, because the lights are not designed to be used year round. Uh, also, it keeps it special for Christmas that these are Christmas lights. Uh, now, there are some projects we can look at throughout the year to add more light downtown and we're very open to those discussions. But later in January, probably around the 20th, I'd say, Netflix will come into town and they will carefully remove the lights. We will carefully store them. And then we will have vendors and get ready in future years, we're gonna be looking for sponsors. And instead of the Netflix signs for the Netflix shows, those will be beautifully designed sponsor signs and the lighting display will increase. And if we can get more sponsorships, we might can increase the number of lights. So all of that is a possibility that we're working on during 2021. And, but Debbie, I don't know that any of this would have happened without your getting involved and getting me involved. I remember that email came at a time that week. I'd been so busy and I hadn't even looked at the email. It almost looked like a junk email and, and you got on it and we just appreciate you so much. Um, Debbie, you also uh, did a lot to help us with some private events and there was a concert held that was very safely held during the pandemic, during the month of December. And I appreciate your getting involved and making sure that they were able to have that event, but do it in a safe way. And I know you did a lot of work with Greg Everhart and we'll also visit Natchez and, and thank you for that. 
Um, now, you have delayed the gala, the annual gala. When will it be? I believe it, yeah, in March. And so, everyone, mark your calendars. We're looking at a new date. I believe it's March 12th for the Chamber Gala. That gala is very important in raising funds for our Chamber of Commerce here in Natchez. And just as so many organizations and churches and civic groups, 2020 was not kind when it came to budgets. And so let's get involved and support the chamber and support that gala when it comes around. Okay. Um, who do we have on the call? Who would like to go next? I'm tell you what, uh, Francis Wallace, we're going to go to you next. I want to just tell you this. We were so excited to get the federal funding during a pandemic year, the federal funding for Forks of the Road. That's a, that's a huge deal there. And after all these years, all the work done by Sir Boxley and his friends of Forks of the Road, and, and also I know Kathleen Bond is on the call, the Park Service, we're so excited that that round of funding is now going to come through that will allow the National Park Service to actually purchase the land around that area needed for the uh, slave market district uh, that is going to be incorporated into our Natchez National Historic Park. The nine parcels of land owned by the city have already been procured and are there uh, uh, being held. And so that project's going to go forward. And Kathleen, we'll get to you in a minute. But Francis, I bring this up because it's so important to the African American history of our community and our overall history. And we're hoping in 2021 we can do more uh, to not only make pro this project happen, but to do more in telling the story that needs to be told of the U.S. Colored Troops. Fort McPherson, and doing more to support NAPAC. Uh, so, Francis, if you have a report. Francis? Can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Okay. No, I don't have a report uh, from the museum, but I'm, I'm just elated to see all the things that's uh, transpiring as far as uh, the forks of the road and the uh, and how it's progressed and that the park service is going forward with it and just to embrace uh, 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 Sir Boxley for all the hard work that he put into it, you know, and just untirely. And now the vision that he had is come forth. And we, we are just so thankful and, and hopefully that uh, during the year 2021, some other things will transpire here in Natchez. Yes, I'm, I'm very hopeful and we'll have our meeting soon on tourism. Um, I spent a very nice uh, afternoon with Daryl White uh, about three weeks ago and we uh, toured the area around Fort McPherson uh, the northern limit of that fort is right at the edge of the Natchez City Cemetery. And so we would like to see some exhibits dealing with that fort and the U.S. Colored Troops installed in a pavilion that is there. It's an old transit pavilion right there at the southern boundary of that cemetery. And... Uh, and also, while we're on the subject, just so everyone knows, Alderwoman Valencia Hall and I, two weeks ago, we had a uh, meeting, a Zoom meeting, with a uh, gentleman from Oklahoma who is a uh, national, uh, he's a nationally known artist in, in doing uh, bronze uh, and other kinds of sculpture. And um, his name is Bill Willis. And he is working on some drawings for us and this is the first time I've said this publicly, I think. If I've said it, I, I mean, this, you know, I'm not going to say too much about it, but he's doing drawings for us right now for a monument to the U.S. Colored Troops. We'll see where that goes. But I just want y'all to know 
that that's being discussed, and we're actually waiting on some drawings right now. And that came out of a discussion of the uh, Emancipation Monument and our need to tell that story more here in Natchez. Very sadly, not understanding the significance of the monument in Washington, D.C., do you know that the city of Boston had their monument, a copy of this monument, removed just recently? They didn't understand. And that is a sad, sad blow to the legacy of those U.S. colored troops who gave of their hard-earned money to make that monument a reality. Just a little reminder, the Emancipation Monument in Washington, D.C., it was erected in 1876 at a cost of $18,000, and over 16000 of that came from the U.S. Colored Troops right here in Natchez. And the entirety of that budget came from emancipated citizens of the U.S. And to remove, trash, destroy what they worked so hard to make possible is an absolute atrocity in my opinion. And I am excited that we in Natchez understand the significance, understand our connection to this important monument in D.C. And I want us to be telling that story more here in Natchez. All right, we're going to move on. Kathleen Bond, I think this is a good setup for you. How are you doing? And Happy New Year. Uh, good morning. I think I've got everything working now. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, I'm very excited to hear you talking about the U.S. color truce because Jeff Mantle has spent the whole year while he's been out of his office on COVID working on research on the U.S. colored troops. And so we are we would love to work with the city on installing some exhibits. Right. Um, uh, other, other updates, uh, I wanna give an update on the forks of the road. As you said, the, uh, we, we finally have a federal budget for fiscal year 21, and it does include um, at least uh, funding for land acquisition at forks of the road. And so we're very excited about that. You know, we're working with the, um, the National Park Foundation and the Trust for Public Lands, and they are actually talking with the landowners at the Forks of the Road site. So we hope that we're able to get some of those acquisitions in place this year. That would be great. We are. Uh, we hope to have all the city donations finalized uh, in February, and so we'll have to be coming up with some um, COVID-appropriate way of signifying that big event when when we finally take the first NPS ownership at that site. Um, the only other thing that I really wanted to bring up is the, the Natchez Visitor Center. You know, I feel like it was a million years ago that um, the National Park Service acquired ownership of that structure back in July. And we've really been doing a lot of work to try to do assessments of the condition of the building and move forward with planning for, uh, for restorations and improvements. Um, of course, it, it doesn't happen overnight and, and we've got a group working to design a whole new heating and cooling system for the building. But in the other, in the meantime, the current system has not been cooperating. So we've been without heat for several weeks down there and then discovered a gas leak on top of that. So the gas is shut off. We're correcting the, the problem in the gas piping. And then we've got to get Atmos and the train guys from Jackson and a plumber all down there. And we hope to get that fixed this week. So I know it's a little bit of a bumpy transition, but um, if we keep our eye on the long game, we're going to get to a good place. So I think that's it for my report, unless you've got any other specific questions. Um, Kathleen, I do have a question. Um, I've had this asked of me. You know, we used to have the movie that showed at the visitor center and obviously a movie is not possible under COVID and so many things at the visitor center. I know that we will come out of COVID sometime this year. Our question is, are there any plans underway for a new movie that will be sponsored by the National Park Service? Um, absolutely. Jeff Mansell is working on that right now. Great, great. And then another question I was asked last week, are plans still there to do an RFP for ticket sales during the uh, 
first quarter of 2021? Well, we, we can't change around the ticket sales because the current tenants have a lease that goes to the end of June. But we will be issuing the request for proposals. Um, the last piece that has to be in place before that is we finished that um, commercial services strategy we were working on, but I have to make a presentation to our regional director in two weeks. And so the plan will be finalized after that point and we can move forward from there. I think our city personnel did a fantastic job selling tickets during the fall pilgrimage and for others, and we're continuing to do some ticket sales. And we will continue doing ticket sales as a service to our tourism community as long as we need to. Uh, but I will say that for the record, the city is not going to be interested in responding to the RFP, and it is our thought that a private vendor uh, motivated by profit and coming in with a lot of experience in selling tickets in tourism related uh, areas uh, will be a good strategy. And so we're very supportive of that. Thank you. Well, and I've had a number of entities express interest. So I hope that we will we will get a good strong partner in there and someone like you said, who, who will have experience and uh, good marketing skills and who also can can build relationships and, and bridge the gaps in, in our tourism community. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Well, yes, the years, I think we have Dr. Barnes from Colin on the call. Dr. Barnes, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Mayor. I may have a lot of background noise going on, but Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, I don't have a report. I just would like to say that I'm so excited about everything that's happening um, in the city and the county, and I'm just so proud to be a part of that. So looking forward to great things in this new year. We are excited to. Dr. Barnes, we're so grateful for you and Colin. Uh, we are excited about this opportunity to work together on job training and already celebrating all that you currently do in the area of job training. So uh, some exciting things to happen in 2021 there. Uh, I, I will tell you our lobbyist, Greg, Greg Harper, and also Manny McPhillips have given us some very good examples of community colleges and school districts working together on job training. But during the process of this, I've also been able to have a lot of good conversations with State Senator John Horn, who is chairman of the Committee on Labor for the Mississippi Senate. And Dr. Barnes, Colin has earned a reputation. Uh, Senator Horn has told me that Colin, in his opinion, has been probably the most effective community college in getting workforce development funds for your existing programs. That's great to hear, Mayor, and um, we're just looking forward to continuing it. Yes, we are. We're excited. And uh, so, uh, you know, already the Natchez Early College Program has won national awards and is the top program in the country. Can't wait for our workforce development program for the same to be said of it. Well, who do, who do we have next on the line? Carter Burns. Carter, we appreciate you. Uh, had a good meeting with you last week. Carter, uh, we'll just turn it over to you. Happy New Year. What's your report this morning? Okay, uh, Happy New Year. Uh, yes, we, um, as you mentioned, with the real estate boom, we've been very busy. Uh, meeting with new property owners, giving them information about their properties. Uh, we've gotten several new tax credit projects underway. <clears throat> uh, so you'll be seeing the transformation of several buildings downtown as they're restored uh, as historic tax credit projects. Uh, our building, uh, you'll see it transformed in the next in the coming months as well. Uh, from the grant that we got last year from Archives and History to replace our roof and to restore the exterior of our building, uh, the Natchez Institute. Uh, that's great news about the exhibits, and we'd be happy to assist in any way, uh, just like we did for all the trails panels downtown. 
Uh, and like the chamber, we are not able to have our annual meeting like we normally do this year. So we just completed a mail out uh, kind of explaining that to our members. And we'll be sending out a newsletter soon um, with some more information. But uh, basically, we're just going to have an exhibit in our building that people can come and visit anytime the last week of January instead of our normal annual meeting. Uh, and then we, have, of course, had multiple events last year that were not able to be held. So we're working on rescheduling those, uh, hopefully for later this year, some that are uh, that we're doing and the some that we're doing in conjunction with uh, our partners at the Park Service. So Kathleen and I are uh, going to get together and try to figure out how to make those events happen this year. Carter, that's great. That's great. And, and just so you know, we did have a little meeting with American Cruise Lines this morning. We had a meeting with Viking Cruise Lines at the end of the day, Thursday, and uh, Mr. Warren Ruther assisted us uh, in that meeting with Viking and also this morning's meeting. Uh, we've been getting great help from uh, Warren Ruther because of his knowledge and his friendships in these companies. Uh, we have sent a message to all three companies that we can't wait to work with them and all of them. We aren't going to sign an agreement with anyone unless we can sign with all of them. Uh, we've had some challenges uh, trying to make sure Viking and American Cruise Lines are able to build their docks and not be too close together. And so we have between Thursday and today started a process where these companies will work with an engineering company and come to some agreement and uh we we're going to be waiting for these companies to come to an agreement on where they their final locations will be and then once we understand that they've agreed then we as a city will agree the next step will then we will need not only our engineers and their engineers getting Coast Guard and Army Corps of Engineers approval, but because this involves the bluff and the historic Silver Street, Carter, we will need your assistance and also your assistance with Archives and History in getting their approval. Because we are raising Silver Street eight feet, we've got to have a continuation of handrail that is aesthetically correct for the district for under the hill district and also um, we've got to make sure that the docks and their designs meet uh, approval historically so be prepared to be called into some meetings soon on that do we have okay great we're happy to happy to assist just let me know thank you carter do we have anyone from visit natchez on the line no Okay. We are excited that Visit Natchez has narrowed their list to three finalists for the new executive director, and we can't wait to meet the finalists and to see where we end up. Uh, we expect a new director will be hired by the end of the month. Uh, we're hopeful, and, uh, and we're very grateful for the work that Lindsay has done uh, at Visit Natchez, Lindsay Smith and uh, Lance Harris and the board uh, had a very good visit with Jennifer Combs last week. Uh, she finally made it by City Hall to get her unity flag that was framed. And uh, that post got a lot of attention on Facebook. Uh, so again, we applaud Jennifer on a job well done. Uh, anyone else on the call with a report? John Doris is on. John, great. John, we... Uh, we are excited about you guys in 2021. So happy new year. I'm gonna turn it over to you. Absolutely, good morning guys and happy new year to everyone. What a what a tough year we had, but how exciting to move into this, this next phase of it. I, I've got a bunch of stuff to get through. I'm gonna move quickly. If anybody has any questions, feel free to just contact me separately and uh, I'll be doing a lot of talking this week. Um, I, I did want to mention uh, regarding Forks of the Road, just thank you so much to Sir Boxley, uh, obviously, for just the tremendous amount of work and dedication over the years, decades that he's committed to Forks of the Road, which 
you know, thanks to Kathleen and everyone else in town just seems to be coming to fruition. And uh, I'm so excited about nurturing that and turning that into something that I think will be a world class tourist attraction and give a whole other dimension to what tourism means, uh, both domestically and internationally. It's really a fantastic project. Um, I wanted to mention Film Natchez. Um, we are beginning in earnest um, a, a new program this year that will reach out to all cities in Mississippi to act as a, a welcome guide to anybody shooting in the state at like we're doing in Greenwood, Mississippi right now with Women of the Movement. Um, we've got a couple of other projects for that and we're doing workforce training and setting up a center in downtown Natchez that will be dedicated to you know training not only in uh, carpentry and catering and doing mentorship programs for writers that will be statewide, um, but we are gonna also have a workforce training uh, economic impact study that we're going to partner with. Um, we're going to try to do that with um, one of the universities, um, and there are three candidates um, that we've been working on, and that information is going to be readily readily available to all of our legislatures and the governor and the, and the powers that be so that we can have an accurate assessment of the economic impact that movies have on our community. Um, and that goal, of course, is to help bring more economic money from the, you know, the state and the federal government to Natchez for all the things that we will need, roads and infrastructure um, and, you know, tourism uh, in, in order to, um, you know, capitalize on the money that's coming in from movies. So that's very exciting. Um, and then uh, a quick update on the Crooked Letter, um, obviously. You know, we've got the Morgan Freeman show that's coming. COVID has delayed them until mid-February now. That was going to be mid-January. That That is to be expected. Um, Hollywood takes this very seriously, as we do as well. The uh, HBO series that was here last month um, had very, very minor incidents. Um, and 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 to, to credit, you know, um, Dr. Mir and his team, for jumping in and always being there at the ready for us and designing a program that makes those studios feel comfortable. Um, you know, we have a Steven Spielberg movie next year. We have another television series from Aaron Kaplan, who does Nashville in Tennessee, that's going to be here. And then we have uh, Tate's movie, in addition to the Morgan Freeman, all for 2021 COVID pending. Uh, but we have a great team on the ground. This economic council and all of the business and Natchez have, uh, have unified and communicated in such a way that um, you know we feel very safe pitching and studios feel, feel very safe in terms of our community organization and how we've rallied to help businesses stay open through this process, um, including the uh, the level of concern that that popped up for that that uh, that show that Greg Everhart moved over to Crooked Letter Stages on High Street. Um, and how efficient and supportive everybody was from sheriff's department, mayor and aldermen, everybody expressing concerns and coming forth with details about what they would like to see. And, uh, and it looked like they had a very successful event. Um, it looked like people who really enjoyed music were there safe, safely wearing masks. And so I congratulate them as well. The last thing on my list is, of course, the depot and the High Street District, the Broadway Entertainment District. Um, very excited about that. We closed on the parking lot, so that is officially ours. Our goal is to open that up to the community in conjunction with the city and the pecan factory portion of it and just design that bluff as a, as a community event space of which we have done a partnership with Arden Barnett uh, in Jackson, and he and his wife are committing to four big shows in Natchez a year. And we're hoping that the Balloon Festival will be incorporated into that as part of uh, his purview since he's worked with them before and certainly um, inviting all of the community restaurants and hotels to participate in an economic stimulating way um, that kind of spreads that around, which is, is gonna be great. I really look forward to working with Arden our goal on the bluff, including the depot, which I'll go into more detail in a second, is to bring economy into the city. It is not to keep the economy on Broadway or High Street. It is to flood all of our hotels and restaurants with wonderful people who want to come there for shows, for carnivals, for 
for, uh, you know, for movies on the bluff, for food festivals, uh, all of those things we want to amplify um, and, you know, create a real economic driver from the bluff all the way back and turn that into, you know, Sixth Street or Beale Street or Bourbon Street, just make it a real entertainment attraction for all of, uh, um, you know, the country and internationally um, as it has been. We just want to turn it up. Um, that said, uh, the depot, I'll be meeting with some of the aldermen separately, individually this week, just to give an update on that project. The uh, the the plans for the depot are in, in the approval stage with archives, which is really great. And then, of course, we move into um, the Preservation Commission in Natchez. Um, begun some discussions there, but we will continue that in earnest. And at the same time, working with uh, city attorney, um, you know, to design a plan for the depot in terms of its lease that will capitalize on that property that really adds to that energy of what we hope to accomplish on that bluff. And that means those beautiful um, crepe myrtles in the front with tables, reef, you know, fixing those pavers around, of course, the, the kitchen and the bar from the interior and then building that deck that was in the master plan and uh, really got a lot of support from the city um, in terms of our enthusiasm for that and working out some programs for financing that will include grants and maybe some TIF financing and some other creative ways to go through it that capitalizes on, you know, Tate's investment in that, um, in that area so that we can begin construction right away. Um, so all of that said, we are, we are really building this foundation for a, a massive push um, when COVID is over, and we're hoping that's in 2021, um, and we are very excited, and uh, my door is always open should anybody have any questions um, about any details that we are doing or how we can provide synergy. Um, this is a cooperative effort, and we um, we really like seeing the diversity in Black-owned businesses that's been on the uptick in Natchez. We're very encouraging of the diversity on the bluff, and we want to partner um, and be aware um, of other opportunities that are in town that we can help um, you know, create out, create more uh, opportunity for in terms of the movies and what we're doing on the bluff. So that's my report. Thank you, everybody. That's great. Thank you, John. And and John, big on our list is getting the depot project signed, sealed, and done this month. Had a good Me visit too. with Dan Dillard, our alderman who chairs our public buildings committee last week. He is extremely impressed with the plans that your architect John Weaver has has done and he also is very impressed with the money that y'all are wanting to invest in this project and the way you're suggesting it be accomplished so let's get it done we're ready yes sir thank you um anything else do we have Natchez Inc Chandler on the phone Okay, we'll be meeting with Chandler this afternoon, but I will say um, Chandler and I have been working together on a number of things that we can't announce publicly right now, and it's important. I know we get criticism for this, and Natchez Inc. has sometimes gotten some unfair criticism for this, and so it's just important for people to realize when you have a business that wants to locate in Natchez and they want to create a lot of jobs and they ask you to keep it confidential, you have to keep it confidential. If you talk about it, not only do you jeopardize that business, but you also send a message that you're not a community that can be trusted and it closes the door on further economic development. So let me just say, we have three exciting, prospective new employers, large employers, and we believe those will be announced very soon. We have another four to six that may happen mid-year. I just want to say my projection is that by July 24th, which will be our first year anniversary as mayor, 
I believe that we're going to have a real impressive job count. And I think in the community of 15,000, when you can put a job count out like we're planning to put out in July of 2021, let me just say, it's going to be impressive. So just hang in there. Be patient with us. Rome was not built in a day, but there are good things coming. Well, I think this summarizes the meeting. Anything else that we need to add? We just want to thank everyone. A good start to 2021, and this is truly going to be our best year ever. God bless. Have a great day.